Namaste. Welcome to all of you who are joining today's practice. My name is Lisa and today's flow will be building up into Garudasana or Eagle Pose. Then let's start off on our mat, laying down in half corpse pose or half Shavasana. Holding on to the crease of your knees, gently release your back and your head on your mat. And from there, roll your shoulders. Keep your arms relaxed by your side, palms facing up. Lower the chin closer to the chest, elongating the back of your neck. And gently close your eyes. Breathe in and out through your nostrils. Observe the length and the depth of your breath. And start to shift your awareness into the state of your physical body. Observe the areas that are making contact with the ground. The soles of your feet, the sacrum, upper back, the back of your shoulders, the back of your arms, the back of your hands, the back of your head. With every exhale, release and let go. Let the weight of your physical body melt onto the earth through those points of contacts. You can keep your eyes closed. Start windshield wipering your legs. So drop both knees to one side and drop it to the other side. Keep your arms, your spines relaxed. And from here, start to Stabilize the pelvis area more, so press the sacrum onto the mat as you continue windshield wipering your legs. So you may notice the range will be reduced, but that's fine. We are working on stabilizing the hips here. and bring the legs back to the center. Roll onto your side, any side, and slowly press up. Let your head hang gently, open your eyes. So tuck one heel under your hips and step the other leg in front of you. And see if you can gently sit your hips on the heel that is under it. Breathe. If you can tolerate this stretch longer, then stay here. Otherwise, you are welcome to untuck the toes and just sit on the heel. And we'll continue with some rotation of the neck. So gently drop the chin down and start making circles with your head. Move slowly. And then reverse. Bring back your head to the center. Gently untuck the toes under and switch your legs position. Start with gently releasing your body weight onto the heel that is under your hips. And breathe.
And same thing for those of you who can tolerate this position, we will stay here for a bit longer. Otherwise, untuck and simply sit on your heel. And we'll place the hands over the shoulders and start circling the shoulder joints. Make the circle as big as possible. Move slowly and reverse. One more and release the arms by your side. Gently untuck those toes. And sit on both of your heels. Hands over knees. Leaning slightly back. Lifting the knees off the mat. And release the knees onto the mat. Interlace the fingers. Place them at the back of your head. And you want to press your head back towards the uh, hands and hands pressing on the head and tuck the chin down slightly so you will be looking straight ahead and creating like a double chin so this is an um, exercise to activate your deep neck flexor breathe and release Let's move on to all four position. So find your wrist under your shoulders and your knees under your hips. And imagine an imaginary block behind your head and you want to press gently against that imaginary block and engaging your deep neck flexor. Spread your shoulder blades away from the midline keeping your ribs in and from this neutral spine position inhale and start to arch from your lower back upper back neck gently look up exhale round flex your spine starting from the lower back upper back and head bringing your eyes looking towards your belly button and continue Arching to inhale and rounding to exhale. Move slowly and try to find maximum extension at the end of your inhale and maximum flexion at the end of your exhale. Just one more. And return back to neutral spine. Keeping your arms straight, not bending the elbows. Spread your shoulder blades. And squeeze your shoulder blades. So, protract and retract breathe as you uh, continue the moves so focus the movement on the shoulder blades spreading and squeezing them and return to neutral position and externally rotate the right arm and reach towards the left side and start circling the arms behind and at some point it will turn into internal rotation and then reverse 
circling back forward external rotation circle to the back and forward Yes, one more to the back, be it internal rotation, and return it back forward into external rotation. Place the right palm down, repeat with the left hand. So start with externally rotate the left arm and reach it forward to the right side. And start circling up and back. At some point, you will naturally turn into internal rotation and circle it back, forward, and to the back, internal rotation, forward, external rotation, and let's keep going for about three more repetitions. and end up with reaching forward in external rotation and place both palms down push back hips to heels and bring your hands closer to you and we'll do a little check for our Garudasana arms so if you put one arm in the internal rotation and the other one in external rotation and then you place the one with the internal rotation under and you bend the elbows and start circling your forearms and arriving in your Garudasana arms so for some the last bit of um, circling the wrist around might not be accessible so what you will do is you will press the back of your hands together and once you are in Garudasana arm You'll find your neutral spine and feel the shoulder blades spreading away from the midline. Start lifting the elbows away from the chest to any degree. Slowly release and we will try the second side. So internally rotate one arm and externally rotate the other one. Then the one that internally rotate will be under. Start bending your elbows as you twist the forearms around each other so either pressing the back of your hands together if you have rooms to twist around the wrist then press your palms together find neutral spine shoulder blades protracted and lift your elbows away from your chest and release and let's move into Dandasana position. So Dandasana is a seated position with both legs uh, straight, uh, flex both feet. Place your hands at the back with fingers facing forward. Bend the elbows so you are not pressing or elevating the shoulder blades towards your ears. But you want to keep them in neutral position away from your ears. And start, start lifting your right leg up and down, up and down. One more, lifting it up and this time externally rotate the right leg. So the toes will be facing out and turn the toes up and lower, lift up, externally rotate. De-rotate and lower, lifting up, externally rotate and this time you will bring the legs out, bring it back in, toes facing up and lower, repeat that one more time. And then lift the legs up, externally rotate, bring the legs out and bend the knee and place the sole of the right foot on the inner side of the left leg and then raise the right hand and with an exhale side bend 
towards the straight leg or the left leg. Keep the front of the heart open forward. And think of reaching the right fingertips beyond the left toes. Breathe. Inhale, raise your right arm and raise your torso upright. And turn your sternum to face the straight leg. And bring your right arm to reach towards the outer side of the left leg. As you move into forward fold. So it's a forward fold with a slight diagonal reach. You can put the other hand behind. Rest. Resting it at the sacrum. With every exhale, fold deeper and reach further with your right hand. And inhale, come up. And we'll return the right leg into Dandasana the same way we brought it here. So start with straightening the right leg out to the side and then bring it back in. Turn the toes facing up and lower the entire leg on the mat. Let's repeat with the left leg. I'll lean backward first. Elbows bend, shoulders away from ears. Lift, left leg up and lower. Lift and lower. One more time. And this time we'll add External rotation, so lift, externally rotate, derotate, and lower. Lift, rotate, out, derotate, and lower. Lift up, external rotation, and bring the left leg out to any degree. Bring the leg back in, derotate, and lower. Repeat one more time. And then lift, rotate out, bring the legs out, bend the knees and place the sole of the left foot anywhere on the inner side of the right leg. Reach the left arm up and start side bending towards the straight leg. You want to reach the left finger beyond the right toes, keep the chest open. Facing forward. And inhale, bring yourself up. Turn the sternum facing towards the front toes. Bring your left arm to reach to the outer side of the right leg. And slowly with every exhale, folding forward. Press, place the other hand at your sacrum. One more breath. And inhale, bring yourself up. And we'll return the right uh, left leg the same way we brought it here. So lean back, straighten the left knee, bring the legs to the center, turn the toes facing up and lower both legs down. We'll move into reverse plank, inhale, press with your hands and your heels and hoist your hips up as high as you can, maybe pressing the toes down and the entire soles of the feet. Breathe, exhale, and lower. Bring the heels closer to your hips, balancing on your tailbone. Come into Navasana with knees bent. And don't lean too far back. Bring the chest closer to your thighs. And from here, squeeze your knees together and spread your feet apart. 
breathe. Keep squeezing the knees to bring the feet further from each other. Exhale. Release into half Shavasana. In this supine position, we'll test the range of our Garudasana, full Garudasana, legs and arms. So start with the legs first. So similarly with the what we did with the arms, internally rotate one hip and externally rotate the other one with both knees bent. And then you want to place the internally rotate hip or leg under the externally rotated one. And then once you get the knees stuck on top of each other, you start twisting the lower leg. And for the last part, which is the ankles, it might not be available for everyone. What you can do is you can press the outer side of your lower legs against each other. For those who have the range in their ankles, can attempt to wrap around the ankles. And once you get the legs set up, you will add the arms. So if your left leg is under for the arms, you will put the left arm over the other arm arm that is under will be internally rotated and the arm that is over will be externally rotated and once you complete both arms and legs set up in Garudasana make a mental note of what is the range of your limbs in Garudasana and release arms release legs we'll check on the second side so this time I will Internally rotate the right leg, externally rotate the left and cross it over the right and start wrapping the lower leg and maybe the ankles and I will externally rotate my right arm, internally rotate the left, cross the right over the left, cross around the forearms and maybe the wrist. Again, make a mental note of how far you can go twisting around your limbs in Garudasana. The range that you find in this supine position will be most likely your range in standing um, position as well. So roll to your side. Wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Place that imaginary block behind your head and turn on your deep neck flexor. Shoulder blades away from ears. Tuck the toes under. Take one big inhale. Expand your ribs. Exhale as you start hovering your knees, sending your hips up and back into downward facing dog. Keep your knees bent for now. Tuck your tailbone up. Press away with your hands. Still having that imaginary block behind your head, so press your head back gently. And bend one knee and straighten the other. And for the foot of the straight leg, you want to push the heel down and push the top of the foot towards the calf. And then switch, bend the other knee and straighten the other leg. And similarly, the foot of the straight leg, you want to push the heel down, but attempting to lift the top of the foot towards your calf. Let's try straightening both knees. Grounding the heels towards the mat, lifting the tailbone up, pressing away with the hands, and breathe. And with the next inhale, slowly walk your feet towards your hands, arriving in forward fold. Keep a micro bend on your knees, but you want to bring 
your pelvis over your heels as much as possible. Let your shoulder relax, let your head hang. And we will next inhale, we will slowly unroll up into standing. So let your arms relax by your side as you start unrolling all the way up. Your neck is last. Let's find our Tadasana. Stand with the feet apart, heels under sitting bones. Engage your legs, slightly squeezing your buttocks to turn your glutes on. Spine neutral, relax your shoulders, palms facing forward, chin down and press the head back, looking straight ahead. Find the soles of your feet, make sure that they are grounded to the mat. One more breath. From here, slightly bend both knees and straighten. Bend and straighten. Keep going for several more. And the next time you bend the knees, you want to bend it towards the left without losing the uh, soles of the feet from pressing entirely on the mat and then swipe the knees to the other side and press up bend the knees towards the right side this time and swipe it to the left and straighten knees bend to the left swipe to the right and straighten to the right left and straight keep going for a couple more Bring the feet close together and we'll repeat the same movement and um, keeping in mind to press the entire soles of the feet on the mat. We will bend the knees and drop it towards the left side, swipe it to the right and straighten to the right, swipe to the left and straighten and keep going. Make the movements smoother. Release, feet apart, heels under sitting bones. Internally rotate both arms and see if you can grab the opposite elbows. If that's not available today, just keep both arms internally rotate and reaching towards the back. Start to shift your body weight towards the left leg. Bend the right knee, bringing the right thigh as close as possible towards your chest. Start to lean forward and kick the right leg back. Keep looking down, not tilting the chin up, but just keep your gaze down in this variation of warrior three. Bend the front knee and slowly drop the other foot at the back lower the back heel keeping the front knee bent release the arms create a cactus arms and add some external rotation so we will bring the elbows forward of the hands still facing forward towards the front leg for the back leg We'll bring it into external rotation as you turn your torso towards the right side and arriving in goddess squat. Left leg in the knee rotate as you swing your torso facing towards the right leg. 
So you are now facing the so-called back of your mat since we are starting facing the other direction. And we'll accidentally rotate the back leg to return us back into goddess. And finally internally rotate the right leg, turning back into the front of your mat. Lower, hands down on the mat, step back, downward facing dog, drop knees down and flex your spine, find your cat pose, keeping the spine flex as much as you can, start to lean forward, lowering the front of the hip towards the mat, keep the spine flex, rounded, untuck the toes, and when the hips, when the hips touch the mat, unroll and move into back bend in cobra squeeze your shoulder blades press the hands away from the mat and move back into spinal flexion start to round starting from your neck upper back lower back lifting your hips away from the mat tuck the toes hover in the knees and Downward facing dog. Inhale, lifting the left leg up. Keep your knee, uh, hip square towards the mat. Bend the left knee. Start to shift your body weight forward as you bring left knee towards the chest and step the left foot in between the hands or closer to the hands. Drop the back heels. Inhale. Raise your torso up. And we'll step the back leg to the front and across the front leg. And in order to do that, you have to put the back leg in internal rotation as you swing it forward. And then swing the right leg to the back. Come into a curtsy. And swing it forward, internally rotated. And swing it back, curtsy. And then step the feet parallel to each other, back in Tadasana. Internally rotate both arms. So either you keep them here and reaching towards the back, or if it's available to you, grab the opposite elbows, squeeze your shoulder blades, keep the chest open forward start shifting more weights towards the right leg keeping balance as you bend the left knee and bring the left thigh close to the chest start to focus your gaze on a point in front of you on the floor Tilt your body weight forward kick left leg straight to the back variation of warrior three breathe and exhale bend the front knee slowly lowering the back foot back heel down and release the arms into cactus add external rotation so you are bringing the elbows slightly ahead of the hands and we will externally rotate the back knee as we swing the torso to the left side, coming into goddess squat. And now we will turn to face towards the back of the mat by internally rotating the right leg and turn the torso to face towards the left leg. And accidentally rotate the right leg, turn back into goddess. In the knee, rotate the left leg. Return to face towards the front of the mat. Lower the hands down. Step back, downward facing dog. 
Tilt your tailbone up. Press your hands away from the mat. We'll transition to cobra or up, upward facing dog. Those who would like to try the transition to cobra, you will drop your knees, move into your cat, shift your body weight forward, lowering your hips and unroll into your cobra. The upward dog version will be staying in downward facing dog, raise your heels, so coming on your tippy toes, start with spinal flexion in this downward dog, start to round your spine, maintaining as much flexion as possible, start to shift your body weight forward, lowering the hips towards the mat, and with uh, when the hip is as close as possible to the mat, unroll and arch your back into upper dog and keep the toes stuck at the back squeeze your shoulder blades look up slightly breathe and start to round your spine moving into spinal flexion again as you start lifting your hips away Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Lift the right leg up, bend the right knee, shifting body weight forward as you bring the right knee close to the chest and step the right foot close to your hands. Drop the back heels. Inhale, raise up. And we'll step the back leg forward and over the front leg by putting the back leg in internal rotation. And then swing it to the back into like a curtsy, curtsy squat. Internal rotation squat. Curtsy squat. One more internal rotation. Step the feet parallel onto each other. Place your hands in prayer in front of your chest. Shift your body weight more towards the left leg. Bring the right thigh as close as possible to your chest. Start to shift forward and kick the right leg back. Variation of warrior three. One more breath, exhale, start to bend the front knee so you can lower the other foot down at the back, heels down. Externally rotate the back leg, turn your torso, coming into goddess squat. We'll stay in goddess squat as we find our Garuda Sana arm. So I will internally rotate my left, externally rotate my right, stack the right over the left, wrapping the forearms and maybe the wrist. Pause here, breathe, find your neutral spine, start lifting your elbows away from your chest. With every exhale, see if you can lower your hips more into your squat. And then release the arms. Windmill the arms as you side bend to one side. And windmill to side bend to the other side. Switch. And switch. And bring the torso. Upright, hands in prayer. We will internally rotate the right leg to and swing the torso back facing towards the front of the mat. And we'll step the back leg in front and crossing in front of the other leg, putting it in internal rotation. And we'll attempt a Garuda Sana in the middle of the room. 
So from this internal rotation squat, you will work on twisting the lower leg and maybe your ankles. If you find the balance is really challenging, what you can do is you can move back into that internal rotation squat and this will be your variation of Garudasana in the middle of the room for today. So if for those of you who are stable on the legs in Garudasana, you want to add the arms. I have the left leg under, so I will put my left arm over the right. And when I have the arms, I will slightly raise the elbow away from the chest. Breathe. And exhale to release the arms first and the legs. Okay, let's try that out on the second side. Tadasana, heels under sitting bones. Make a prayer. Place it in front of your heart center. Start to shift your body weight to the more towards the right leg. Bend the left knee, bringing the left thigh as close as possible to your chest. Start to tilt forward, slightly bend the, the right knee as you kick the left leg back. Look down. One more breath for balancing work. Exhale, bend the front knee more so you can lower the other foot. Press the back heel down. And we will internally, ro externally rotate the back leg as we turn the torso towards the left side, back in the goddess squat. And we'll try Garudasana arm on the, this side. So I will internally rotate my right arm, left arm in external rotation, and I will stack left arm over the right, start circling on the forearm, and maybe circling around the wrist to press the palms together. Otherwise, press the back of your hands together. Breathe and with every exhale, attempting to go lower in your goddess squat. Keeping the spine neutral. Lift your elbows away from your chest to any degree. Breathe. Exhale, release the arms and wind windmill both arms as you side bend to one side and switch to the other side and switch and switch and coming back to the center. Pray your hands in front of your chest. In the knee, rotate the left leg to bring your torso turning back into the front of the mat. And we will cross the back leg in front of the front leg by doing internal rotation of the left leg. Find balance first here. And if it feels all right, Let's see if you can move further into Garudasana legs. The balance is really challenging. Step back into internal rotation squat. And whichever legs position you choose, we'll add the arms. So we will cross the right arm over the left. Find Garudasana arms and lifting the elbows away from the chest. Breathe. Exhale, release the arms, release the legs. 
Oh, shake your legs. From here we will slowly roll forward, starting from the neck. Look down. Start rounding your upper back. Keep your arms relaxed by your side. Keep rounding. And when your hands touch the ground, press your palms onto the mat. Slightly bend your knees. Align your hips over your heels as far as you can without tipping over forward. Grab the opposite elbows and swing side to side. And release, palms down, inhale, halfway lift, look down and stay light on your fingertips, exhale, forward fold, step one foot back at a time, drop your onto your knees, and we'll continue into one last supine position before Shavasana, if you can find a wall space. You will do a Viparita Karani or legs up the wall. I do not have any suitable wall space near me, so I will just grab a small pillow to be placed under my sacrum. Those who are at the wall, you can position yourself side saddling against the wall, lay on your side and then turn to face up and straighten your leg at the wall. I will prop myself with the pillow. So pillow under the sacrum. Lifting my legs up. Arms by your side. Palm facing up. Start to down regulate, slowing down your breathing, taking longer inhale and even longer exhale. After your next exhale, for those of you who are on the wall, you will bend your knees and press the soles of your feet on the wall and turn onto your side. Gently come out of your position. Find your way back onto your mat. Start settling yourself onto Shavasana. Lay your entire back on the mat, legs straight, feet apart about mat width distance. Arms. Spread out slightly away from the side of your body, palm facing up. Tuck your chin down slightly towards your chest. Shake your head side to side if you need to release any tension on your neck. And once you are settled, close your eyes.
return to your breath follow the rhythm of your inhales and your exhales and let's do a simple uh, mindfulness practice while we are here so shift your attention towards your nostrils area in particular the movement of air entering and exiting your nostrils it will be a very very subtle observation sensing observing the movement of air in and out of your nostrils whenever your mind drifts away gently guide your mind and your awareness back into the movement of air around your nostrils find comfort and ease and give your body permission to rest Start deepening your breath. Take one full inhale. Exhale it out through your mouth with a sigh. Inhale. And out, sighing. One more time. Wiggle your toes and fingers. Shake your head side to side. Bring your legs together. Reach your arms over your head and give yourself one big stretch. And release. Keeping your eyes closed. 
turn to your side, any side, and curl yourself up like a baby and stay there for a moment. And whenever you are ready, press up into seated position. Legs cross in front of you. Raise your arms overhead, palms together to make to make a prayer. Lower the prayer to the center of your heart. Thank you for joining me in this practice. Stay well, and I'll see you next time. Namaste.